Welcome, this is Professor Nathan Wheezy of Marquette University. This section we're going to talk about the three phase um, PLL, phase lock loop. Okay, so here we go. We have a diagram here that kind of describes a simple phase lock loop for three phase system. Let's go over all the, the blocks. So here's the incoming voltages. This would be three sampled voltages for three phase. And the first thing that they're going to do is go into this ABC to DQ block. And what this does is compute a mathematical transformation. Now the mathematical transformation is actually written down here in equation 4. So what it's doing is it's taking in three values, VA, VB, VC, and an angle. This angle is right here. And it's fed in here, 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 and here and we calculate a DQ. Now, what is this for people who are not familiar with uh, the DQ transform? What this actually does, it's a moving or rotating reference frame. So what we'll create is this space vector VS that represents the voltage, and this thing is gonna spin at omega. And what happens is this thing will take on a real and imaginary values depending on where it is in time. So drawn in purple, that's just to the right, it would just have a real value drawn later in time it might be at this angle drawn in blue and this would have some real part and some imaginary part. Now that's called a fixed reference frame and that would be uh, alpha beta. Now what we're going to do is rotate a reference frame with that and lock onto that. So this would be our reference frame D and this would be Q. And guess what, at, if we lock that reference frame to that rotating space vector we get the DQ transform. Essentially that's what we're doing. And so what happens is if you're locked to it, VS, or excuse me, D is purely a real value, right? And Q is zero because we're locked on that reference frame to the rotating space vector in blue. So having known all that, essentially what we're gonna do in terms of control is that we're actually we don't really care what D is. D is actually going to be the, the magnitude of the space vector, but we don't care about the magnitude. Um, what we'd like to do is actually drive Q to zero, because if we drive Q to zero, that means that we are locked, right? That means there's no imaginary component at all. So essentially, Q is our error. It tells us whether we're locked or we're not locked. So we don't have to do any subtraction. We just measure the three voltages. We plug in what we think theta is. We do the transform. And if Q is zero, we're locked. If it's non-zero, we got some work to do to lock. OK, so that's great. Um, we'll pass that error into a PI controller, which is shown right here. And that's going to try to drive the error to zero. Now, what comes out of this block is really delta omega. How far are we off of the center frequency, which would be this guy? So, for instance, if we're trying to lock to 60 hertz, the center frequency would be 2 pi 60. And when we're in steady state, the output of controller would be zero. But let's say the grid is floated a little bit or has changed and the grid's at 60.1 or center frequency is 60 hertz. The output of the controller would be 0.1 hertz in steady state. Or excuse me, um, point, yeah, 0.1. That would be the delta right here. Okay, so that's, that's what will happen there. Now remember, this is omega. This is what we think omega is, right? And we're going to pass this into an integrator in order to get out theta, right? That's the relationship for it. So the derivative of theta with respect to time is the speed. If we integrate, we get theta. Now, this number would obviously shoot off to infinity as time goes on if we're just integrating a constant. So in order to not have any wrapping or overflow issues, we simply wrap it. And that's what we're doing here with the mod 2 pi. So let me explain what's going on with this. Let's use a different color here. Uh, generally, what happen is if you're just integrating, this would take off right off towards infinity, but we're taking a mod, so what we'll do is just wrap the phase. And we're wrapping it at two pi, just like this, okay? All right, and so this is a complete control block diagram for a three-phase PLL. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk a little bit more about how this thing works and how to design a proper controller for it and to how to test it against various cases that we'll see in real life. So here's Again, our controller is a simple PI controller, which we're going to use here. 
The open loop transfer function is pretty simple. The gain of the integrator is one of rest. The gain of the controller is, again is uh, KPS by, plus KI by S. So that's all the same. So let's put this, this is our open loop. This is our controller. And where do we get this VG from? Well, VG is the actual the gain of this stage right here. That is our gain of the DQ transform. Okay. All right. So we can calculate the closed loop response now, now that we have the open loop. So just recall that this is going to equal GOL over 1 plus GOL. And the thing to note here is that we have... We have the roots right here of this characteristic equation, and we can go ahead and put those wherever we like. And so that's how we're going to do this design. Again, we can do it a multitude of ways, but that's how we're going to do this design. So we know that, for instance, this term that sits right here is oh, the natural frequency squared. So we'll just set that equal to the natural frequency, which is what we did. Okay, awesome. This term that's in front of us, we know is... to theta natural frequency, right? So we can plug that all in with equation eight and get equation nine. So essentially what we have is, we have the damping ratio as a function of KP and KI. We're trying to find KP and KI. VG is set by whatever the grid we're trying to connect to is. And we also have the natural frequency, which is a function of KI. So essentially we can design for our, whatever we would like. So in this example, I'm going to assume that the grid voltage peak is 170. So that would be our VG. I'm going to assume we're going to design a, with a damping ratio of 0 0.7. It's a decent damping ratio. And a natural frequency of 100 hertz. Now, if you select those three values and calculate equations 8 and 9, this is what you get for equation 10 are the controller gains. And now we have a, a, a controller fully designed for this three-phase PLL. Let's just take a quick look at it from the Bode plot perspective. This is uh, in blue here. This is our open loop GOL. And you can see that we're crossing through zero gain, dB gain or gain of one at about 100 hertz. Okay, that's great. So what that's going to tell us is our bandwidth is roughly 100 hertz here. <coughs> and you can note that by looking at the closed loop response because this is GCL. It essentially, it's going to pass anything from 0 up to 100 hertz and then it starts to roll off. Essentially, filters out anything beyond that. <coughs> you can also look at our phase margin response for um, the open loop transfer function. You can see we're somewhere around, I don't know, let's see, 135, 130, somewhere around approximately 60 degrees of phase margin. Again, that's how far are we away from uh, minus 180 when we cross through a gain of 0 dB. Okay, so this is a good design. Remember, we're talking about phase margin. The more phase margin, the more damped you are, essentially. All right, so the first thing we do when I ran this um, simulation for this PLL with this controller is just checked a few things. And, and what I'm doing here is this is the D-axis. So that's the D coming out of the, um, the uh, DQ transform. This is the Q-axis. Remember, we want to drive the Q-axis to zero. That means we're locked. This is control effort, U. So that's what's coming out of the PI block in order to drive the controller to, uh, to st steady state. This is our phase, or theta, if you will. And these are the three phase voltages. Okay. What I'm simulating in this is we start at time zero, we're already locked. Okay, and that's actually pretty easy to see because everything's in steady state. Q is fully at zero. The control effort's not changing. We have a nice fixed phase. And you can see the 
frequencies of our voltages and phases of them are not changing. But what am I simulating here? I'm actually going to simulate and try to understand what happens to different transients. So what I've actually done here in this example is I have about uh, a 17 volt jump in the voltage at this time. So if you come in and look here at the voltages, they're going along and then all of a sudden they jump up by about 17 volts. And this is for all three phases. You can see it here, you can see it here, and you can see it here. So this is just a simple transient on the three phase line. And you can see the only effect it really has on the system is that D jumps right here. You can see it. But it doesn't affect Q at all. You can see Q remains locked. So we don't have any issues with Q when you have a voltage jump. Now this was a balanced voltage jump, so you're not going to see anything on Q, so there's nothing to expect there. So, okay, this looks good. The controller's keeping track here. Let's check a different transient now. All right, so what are we going to do now? We're actually going to do the response to a phase step of about 0.62 radians at time 0.21. Well, here's time 0.21, and you can see what's happening here. If you look down at these voltages, let's look at this, all of a sudden they're jumping in phase. And this is a pretty extreme case, but just to, to kind of visualize what happens. So we're going along and all of a sudden they jump on us. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, all of a sudden we're locked, we're locked, we're locked, and we jump out of lock immediately because the phase of the actual voltage sources have, have changed. They've jumped. It's a discrete step. So what happens is the controller starts actuating okay we need to speed up here and get things moving we want to drive these the the um, system back to steady state and then it starts locking in and owning in here by about 0.22 uh, milliseconds here so that's a control effort trying to basically get this controller back into a locked state you can see that immediately in the q-axis we're running along we're good and then we came out of lock and then as the controller actuates, we get back into lock. And again, this is a pretty extreme case. Having a phase jump of this much on the voltage lines is a, a pretty unrealistic case in reality. But just here, we're, we're doing this to illustrate how fast this controller can relock. Um, we're talking only 10 milliseconds time here, less than a cycle of, of 60 hertz. So it's a pretty good response. Okay, let's check out another transient here. Now we're going to do something different here. We're going to check this response to a frequency step. So last one was phase, but this is going to be frequency. Okay, let's see what happens. So this happens at about 0.31 in time. So right here is where you're going to see the frequency jump. Now looking at this, the frequency jump was only 1 hertz. Now again, 1 hertz frequency jump, a discrete jump in Frequency is a pretty drastic case. But again, here, just to illustrate how well this controller design will work here. So um, one thing, you'd like to see the jump, but it's pretty hard to see it because it's 1 hertz on top of 60. But essentially what's happening are these three phase waveforms are going at 61 hertz instead of 60 after time 0 0.31. Again, it's pretty hard to visualize because it's 1 hertz on top of 60. But... These waveforms after 3.31 are going faster by about 1 hertz. Now you can see this almost immediately though in the Q axis. So what happens is all of a sudden we, we, we're at zero. That's where we want to be in steady state, right? We're locked on to 60, but the source jumps to 61 hertz. So our Q is going up. We're coming out of lock. We don't have our axis aligned, but our controller immediately starts actuating, which is nice. All right, and so what happens? The actual, the controller will push us into steady state. So well, let's call it somewhere about right here. We're back in lock, right? Q is back to zero. It means our Q axis is aligned with zero. We only have a D component. We're locked. But what's interesting is you look at U, U is non-zero, but U is now, this remember is essentially the delta omega. So if you take this and you add to it 60 hertz, well, guess what? You get you get the 61 hertz that we're that we are locking on to here okay so that makes sense and again here's our phase output here which is looking nice and clean all right so that was the the control response to a a step
in frequency. Now let's take a kind of a more extreme case here. What we're going to do now is do something that may happen in, in reality. So we're going along, life is good, we're locked on, the voltages are balanced, we have 60 hertz, and at time 0.35, we have a 10% voltage imbalance. And actually, I'll show you exactly where it is. So at about 0.35 in time, we have a 10% imbalance on red, actually, this phase. Let's call it phase B here. And you can see it's actually less, so it's, it's decreased by 10% compared to the other phases. And what you notice now, essentially what we have is an unbalanced case, right? We, all three magnitudes of voltage source are not the same. And this actually reflects in the D steady state and the Q steady state. So what happens is now, because of this unbalance, you're going to get a, um, a second harmonic in your D and Q axis. So, okay, what does that mean now? We're not driving these two signals to DC because of this harmonic. Then what do we actually want to do? Well, what you'd like to do, at least for the Q axis, is you'd like to maintain the average at zero. I know there's going to be a, an AC component, again, because of the unbalance. But you want to drive the average to zero. Okay? And as long as you do that, you'll stay locked. And you'll get the phase out properly, which is what we're, what's happening here. Okay, you have a little bit of a transient here at the beginning in order to get this controller back in there, but that's what you do. Now, you may say, okay, this is great, but it is varying a little bit. Can I do better? Yeah, there are more of advanced applications where you, for this three-phase PLL that you can get a better response and you can essentially get rid of the response of this uh, harmonic. And what you're really going to want to do in that is basically extract your three-phase voltages into uh, a uh, positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence. And then lock on to, for instance, the positive sequence. Okay? And what will happen is the unbalance will show up in zero sequence and potentially negative sequence. It depends on, on um, how bad your imbalance is and what type of imbalance it is. Okay, that concludes the discussion for the three-phase PLO. Thank you.